Hello, my name is Mike M0 MSN, and uh, over the last, oh, it must be two or three months, I have been putting together a stacked beam for uh, two uh, 70 and 23 centimeters, two meters, 70 centimeters, and 23 centimeters um, uh, to put up on my chimney. And yeah, well, this is the story. Um, I'm sorry that a lot of it's not been filmed, but yeah, you know, it's the way it blows, isn't it? Anyway, here we are. Anyway, right, um, G450 uh, rotator controller uh, from Yesu. Um, I've wired up the the end that goes into the into the actual uh, rotator. Oh, probably about two years ago, um, and now uh, I need to wire up the end that actually goes into the the rotator controller. The problem is I can't remember what I did for the wiring loom on this end. So it's a testy proby thing uh, to find out what goes what. Uh, we'll then check in the destruction manual uh, to find out what cable goes to what pin on the, um, the connector in the back of the rotator uh, controller box. And uh, oh, here we go. So we've got the wiring diagram. So we're okay on that. So I just got to test for continuity, what pin goes where, and then we'll put it uh, together in the controller box. Um, and uh, boom, boom, with any luck, uh, I'll be able to test the rotator before it goes up on the, on the mast. Right, so we've got the tester. We've got our um, connector. The cable is numbered. So as I put the plug on the other end, I have a funny suspicion I would have followed the numbering and uh, one, two, three, and this number four here would be number four. Um, even though there's two, three, four, five, I would have put one, two, three, hopefully, but we'll find out. Oh, which one was that? Number two is number two. Two and three is two and three. So number four, the centre one, will be number one. Right. Cable one, two, three, yellow, green. <clears throat> Connector four, two, three, five. Oh. So now we've identified those, we can um, now obviously solder the cable into the connector. Oh, I wish I had decent eyesight, that would be handy. So all we have to do now is uh, put them into our connector or block and uh, make sure that they're home. So here we are, this is the ASU uh, rotator controller. Um, it's just on a cardboard box at the moment. Actually the box it came in, um, as you see it's lit up and I've set it for 180 degrees, which is south, south. Um, and what I'll do now is I'll press the rotator to go right. As you can see it's going right and if you look out the window, the rotator is indeed turning right. Hopefully, if I go 90 degrees from where I was, judging it by the look of the antenna there, and if I come down, it should be pointing west. Oh, look at that, brilliant. Okay, so this is on a test uh, pole, obviously. It's not gonna be at this height when it's actually put up on the, uh, on the roof. But 
this at the moment is now facing true south, which is that direction towards my uh, magnetic loop. Um, so what have I done? What have I got? Well, I've got a 15 element um, Yagi horizontally polarized uh, for 70 centimeters. Uh, above that, I have a two meter antenna. This one is a nine element tonner um, for two, for two meters, um, which is quite nice. And then on top of that, I have a 23 centimeter, 18 element, uh, or 23 centimeters, which is a dual antenna. Okay, just to catch up to see if I've got this in the right place and uh, just to work out how dumb I am really. Uh, and the idea is to put my uh, beams up on the end of a pole, which I've just struggled <laughs> to, to get into this position. Uh, a bit precariously. Um, this is a, a scaffold pole, so it's stainless steel. Um, stainless steel, no, it's not. It's um, galvanized steel um, pole, which has been threaded through the uh, the metal pagoda I made uh, two years or so ago. Um, so this is this is a, a five and a half meter pole, maybe a six meter pole. I'm not measured it. Basically, it reaches to the top of my house. Uh, when it's on the ground um, and what I'm going to attempt to do rather stupidly perhaps is put my beam on the top of this you can see it's quite precarious but I've got no other way of getting it up because I have to thread it through as I've done here uh, so that's over and now that's under because I've got to bend it around and wang it up on those KT brackets so anyway, um, let chaos resume and remain. Health and safety is obviously of a primate um, importance. So um, I'm going to be roping things in so that they can't slide. And I'll be using a pulley system to get it up there. But anyway, I um, thought I'd just report in at this moment. Okay, so the, uh, the pole is up with the antennas on. Now my son and I struggled like a couple of struggly things from struggle land. Um, it was just a horrendously difficult thing to do, so ended up not recording any of it. Um, I don't think anyone would have wanted to see the, the struggle and pain and agony on our faces. Um, but there we are. So it's up facing south at the moment. Um, it will go through 360, so I'm not hitting the roof at all. However, um, the west is pointing pretty much at the top of the chimney, so I'm not sure how good that's going to be. But good enough, I suppose. Um, right, so now it's a case of tidying all the cables. Um, I mean, I've done a reasonably good job so far anyway. Uh, but I now need to tidy all of the cables and uh, tape them in. And as it's now just about to start to rain, as you can see from those lovely clouds, um, I need to uh, seriously sort out uh, some weather protection for the end of the connectors. I'm very cold uh, and it's quite late now. It's um, five to seven in the evening um, in the UK. It's a Saturday and uh, I've spent the entire day since about 10 o'clock this morning trying to erect an antenna. So it's been an incredibly difficult day. I am incredibly tired. Um, I'm aching everywhere. I really am. My, uh, my back is really hurting. Um, but uh, my son and myself managed to, uh, to get it up there. It was particularly difficult because we had to um, put it in between this, this pergola um, which is a metal frame which is actually bolted to the house so there's no way we could remove it um, but fortunately uh, with a little bit of daring do and uh, 
whatever, we've managed to uh, weave the pole, which was incredibly heavy because it's a, it's a proper galvanised steel um, scaffold pole. Uh, in itself, it weighs about 25 kilos, maybe more. And then you put another 10 kilos of antenna and rotator on the end of it. And believe you me, swinging that up there was incredibly difficult, but we've managed to do it. Um, so I guess now is uh, to test to see if it works. Yeah, but, um, it'll be interesting to see how you get it when he comes on. Uh, and GM3 SEK and the beacons, of course. I'm sure you'll get the beacons towards London, but uh, I don't know how John manages to get them because he's got a lot of hills in the way. I suppose it's up to Andover's board direction to some degree, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what you're in what direction on what band. Anyway, cheers to John. I'll have to go as well as a minute and a cup of tea. I've been having for quite a while. There's still two left over on there from the TV net. <laughs> Talking to each other. <laughs> um, I'll, have to, I'll have to introduce myself next Thursday night at the, uh, the BATC net, I think, just to say hello. I work, I work most of them on various microwave bands and various stuff, but there's never on video. Oh, wait, I've worked too. I work. I work.